I am the Philosophical Bachelor and today I'll be summarizing Jürgen Habermas's paper, Religion in the Public Sphere. In a democratic secular state with a constitution and a tr contractualist tradition, it means that not only should all citizens have equal political participation, but there needs to be a joint deliberation to form the democratic will. For this to happen, everyone needs to have equal access to the public arguments so that a common human reason can justify the secular state. There is a constitutional protection for the freedom of religion to protect religious pluralism. So it is not just two blocks, the religious and the secular, but the religious block is composed of multiple religions which might disagree with one another. The secular state is necessary to guarantee religious freedom for everyone, but it is not sufficient. There needs to be also agreement between the liberty to practice one's religion and to be spared from the religious practices of others. To find this common ground, the reasons put forward must be acceptable to all. To do this, parties involved must learn to consider the perspective of others. The procedure that does this well is the deliberative mode of democratic will formation. Despite any dissent, citizens should respect one another's view as free and equal members of the political community. This is a civic solidarity, and they have to look for a rationally motivated agreement. Rawls calls this the duty of civility and the public use of reason. The duty of civility is the moral duty to explain to one another on how the principles and policies they advocate and vote for can be supported by public reason. This involves a willingness to listen and fair-mindedness. Public reason are the premises we accept and think that others can also reasonably accept. Otherwise, political decisions will be illegitimate because one party will be forcing its will on another party. What is secular is the separation of church and state. So politicians and officials in political institutions have to formulate policies in a language that is accessible to all citizens. According to Rawls, the comprehensive doctrines may be introduced in public discourse so long as proper political reasons are presented in due course. This is the Institutional Translation Proviso of John Rawls. The comprehensive doctrine is a religious doctrine that governs the conduct of the believers. Argument against the institutional translation provisio is that it seems to impose a lopsided burden on the religious, since drawing on their religious beliefs isn't something easily separable from their convictions. Politicians and state officials are obliged to remain neutral, but private citizens personally don't have to supplement their public statements of religious convictions in a, general, in a generally accessible language. Habermas, however, says that they must know and accept that only secular reasoning counts beyond the institutional threshold. The religious needs to have the epistemic ability to consider their own faith from the outside and relate it to secular views. They need not do this alone, however. The others can cooperate to accomplish the translation that is needed. The liberal state has an interest in the plurality of views, including religious ones, because it might otherwise lose key resources for the creation of meaning and identity. Religious traditions have a special power to articulate moral intuitions, and so it is a vehicle to transport truth content which needs translations in a secular society. This translation needs to happen pre-parliament so that it can then enter the public political sphere. This needs to be a cooperative task to prevent asymmetric burden. The secular citizen needs to be open to the possible truth content and dialogue with the religious citizen to make possible a translation. The goal is a community integrated by constitutional values versus one divided along the lines of competing worldviews. Hence the need for complementary learning processes by all parties. Both sides need to change their epistemic attitudes, where the religious citizen needs to become reflexive, to be self-reflective on how others view their beliefs. And the secular citizen needs to transcend the limitations of secular knowledge, accepting that religious discourse has value to offer and hence requires translation. Thank you.